Now, if you look at today's vehicles on the road, they're getting bigger and bigger, but the technology inside is getting smaller. These tiny little cameras are supported by a circuit board that looks like this, an image sensor and detection technology and connectivity. And all of that requires miniature power. I'm here to talk to Michael from Rome to find out how they make sure that power is delivered. So Michael, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. We're here at the Rome Stand Embedded World 2022, and I've heard you've got some interesting new technology for power conversion. Correct, correct. So today I, I have the honor to talk about uh, quick current regulators, which are switching regulators, yeah. as well as um, cutting edge technology for NanoCap, uh, which is uh, LEO technology, which also provides super uh, positive effects and, and benefits to the customers. Fantastic. So with the switching regulators, typically in an application, one of the parameters engineers are looking at is that transient response when there's a, a big step load change. And yes. I've, I've heard with your quick current technology, you've made a few improvements. Yes, correct. First of all, transient load responses are very important. Yeah, so all these modern processes, they are not continuously taking the current because they are not having all the time the full power or full switching power available so or processing power available they need yeah to manage the thermals yes and therefore at a certain point in time they need the current and then they have to cool down a little bit and these are very often causing a lot of troubles with the transients yeah and therefore we need a really good technology for that today it is solved with a lot of capacitors right but here you can see the future. Super. Now, so switching regulators typically have some sort of feedback loop in them to, to keep to monitor the voltage and then to sort of compensate for those transient changes. But I heard that your feedback loop has sort of been improved to have a faster response. What, Co how is that done? Yeah, so we have done a split of the feedback loop, mm -hmm. a split in the direction where to manage on one side the speed which is responsible for the transient and on the other side we need a slow uh, response or a low frequency which allows us to have the voltage very stable yes. so what we have done we have split the uh, the feedback loop into two parts fantastic so how does that work so yeah as mentioned we are we are now having the possibility, as we have split it up, we have the possibility to tune the frequency, make, means we can make it fast mm -hmm. while tuning the frequency. And then on the other side, we have the second part, which takes over the gain, yeah. and here we can manage that. And so we are now able to have a very fast transient load response, but a very accurate output voltage at the end of the day. Now, application engineers, developers will be interested to understand what, how that benefits in then their design. What benefits are they going to see by switching to uh, quick current technology? Yeah, the main, the main advantage what they will have is that they can reduce the output capacitance on their bug regulator of our new technology yeah. significantly. If we are comparing um, the, the transient load responses, we can go up to one force if cer certain aspects can be or needs to be, be looked at and everything works fine. So either you are halving it or you're going to one force, it depends on your transient load requirements, means on the maximum allowed drop voltage or overshoot voltage. Yeah. And this is what we can do with this new technology. And what sort of application spaces are these, uh, these devices finding a home in? Uh, all, all automotive industrial applications, applications where you have uh, processes which have these transient low behaviors where, where they manage the thermals with uh, speeding up, powering down. It's in all kinds of devices, automotive, IVI, in vehicle infotainment, ADAS, everywhere. And then you've also brought another new technology here out at Rome, uh, NanoCap. Can you tell us a, a little bit more? That's, that's not a switching converter, is it? Exactly. NanoCap, that's similar or it's the technology of LEOs. Linear dropout regulators, they are not switching. You have to drop by your transistor. You're using it in application where you need quiet voltages, like references for ADCs, for PLLs, 
for any kind where you need a quiet voltage. Yeah. And there, LDOs are important. And one of the important things about an LDO circuit is obviously making sure that that voltage stays stable. And on the output side, we typically put in several capacitors to, to give us that, that storage bucket. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, In these nano cap or the, these LDOs normally request an output capacitor. Then you have some wires, some yeah, distance on your PCB going to the point of load and there you have an input capacitor. Yeah. And this new technology, yeah, similar to, to our quick current, wants to reduce or get rid of this output capacitor. Yeah. So why, why do we want to get rid of those output capacitors? I mean, they're then ch capacitors are relatively cheap, um, they don't take up that much board space, they're quite small. Yeah, that's correct. They cost subsense probably. These one microfarad up to 4.7 microfarad capacitors. But just thinking on the worldwide market on the passives today, um, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to manage them, it's hard to buy them. And it's not just this cost of the, of the device itself, we have also the cost of the stockage. If you got it, <laughs> you have to stock it, you have to design it in, you have to assemble it. You have to test it, and out of a device which costs almost nothing, yeah. you, you're coming to multiple cents. Yeah? Yeah. It depends on the volumes you're, you're purchasing, numbers of, of, of PCBs you're manufacturing, but it can be easily five to a few cents, a few more cents. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we've seen over the last two years of COVID is obviously supply chain issues. Um, are, when are engineers going to be able to see these two new products available for designing? Yeah. Is this available now? Yeah, it, it will be available in the, uh, by the end of the summer, August, November timeframe for the first products for the nano caps. Yeah? Yeah. Um, this is almost ready. It's in, in, in mass production preparation. And these current devices, which provide an output current of up to uh, 150 milliamps, there will be an additional family or an extension of the family. I, as far as I have it in mind, we will have in the next, let's say, one year, up to 25 different devices. The next generation is already in design or already finalized for the design and qualification phase. And these devices will be ready in Q1 next year. And these provide then up to 500 milliamps. Okay. And do you see a time when we can get rid of the output capacitor completely? Is that going to oh, be possible? What an interesting question. What an interesting <laughs> question. So total removement of output capacitors, you never know. But I'm at the moment, I'm doubting a little bit on that. Yeah. But we have very innovative designers in Japan sitting. Right, OK. <laughs> so who knows what they'll come up who with? Who knows with what they come up? But I assume that we will stick at the end of the day to output capacitance of, let's say, 100 nanofarad, prob probably 47 for, for these kind of LDOs. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think this will be the future. We are currently evaluating these, these things, yeah, also defining the maximum distance between the point where you are where you're generating the output voltage versus you have the point of load, what could be the maximum length of, of PCB lines. and so on. Yeah. yeah, so these are under evaluation, but at the moment it looks pretty good. Well, it's great to see such innovation in power technology. Yes. Thank you very much for talking to us, Michael, and we wish you all the best yeah. with the Embedded Vault Show. Yeah, thank you so much.